Righto, just going to start off with some of the easy stuff and I'm um, going to wait for it hopefully tomorrow, the next day, the weekend, hopefully dry up so I can put the ramps out in the backyard there and get the car up on the ramps to do the oil change. But in the meantime, we'll do some of the, the easier stuff, start off and start off with a, one of the easiest things you can do is your windscreen wiper thing. Should do this once a week guys, top your windscreen wiper, there you'll see the picture of the windscreen wiper on there, mine's got a blue lid on it. Grab some of this from Super Cheap and tip about that much into it. I've already put the water in. That's more than 75 mil. They say 75 mil. Do a bit of that. Conditions your windscreen wiper blades. Now, mine are getting close to changing. I'm not gonna get them from super cheap. I'm gonna, uh, Steve from Saw Adventures um, did one on some windscreen wipers. I'm gonna try those wipers. They're Aussie made, or an Aussie company. They're not Aussie made but I'm gonna give those a go, they look really good. So, first one, your windscreen washers, top it up with water, and a bit of this stuff here helps bloody get the bugs off. The last thing you wanna be doing at night, hit a big grasshopper and it smears all over your windscreen, and you haven't got any water in your, in your thing. The other thing I'm gonna do now is basically something you should do once a week as well, power steering fluid. And I just watched a bloke called The Brown Town, I think, and he's showing us how to uh, syringe this stuff out and put new power steering fluid in. I'm not going to do that this service, but that'll be one of my upcoming clips. So power steering fluid is on maximum over here. There's another one over here, my brake and clutch fluid. Screw that off, and that is, that is topped up. That is something I would get Matthew, my mechanic, um, to bleed the brakes. I think I got that done a couple of years ago. A uh, new brake and clutch fluid and he bled the brakes and all that type of stuff. My reservoir here with the pink fluid, that was done a year ago by Brad Howell. I had a small leak. Brad fixed the gasket up and so I've got new radiator fluid there. The other thing I would do over at the battery is check your battery. Mine's got a green light on there. The green light's on which means it's in good health. Check your battery. If you've got an old style one you can take it off. Have a look in. If your elements are exposed, top it up with some distilled water. That's something you should do every week as well. Check your, the health of your battery. Make sure your battery's secure in there. So there's a few little things you can do under the bonnet here. Checking your fluid levels is one of them. Not going to worry about my oil. I checked that yesterday, and I'm going to do an oil change on the weekend. So that'll be done. So my... Uh, coolant level is good, my brake and clutch fluid is good, my power steering fluid is good. I've put some of the, the stuff in my windscreen washers. I've checked the battery, the green light's on over there. That is all good. Have a look at the tension of your fan belt. Have a look under there. If anything looks out of place, make a note of it. And if it's above your pay grade, that's something you can get your mechanic to have a look at. Righto, the next thing I'm going to do uh, replace the air filter and clean the mass airflow meter here. Right, our next thing, air filter. Very, very easy. Still had some water in there. I gave the engine a wash down yesterday, so still a bit of water. Three little clips here, flick them out. One, two, three, and off she goes. Take that out. What I do is once a week, once a fortnight, I get my compressor in the shed here and blow it from the inside out. I could keep doing that, but I haven't replaced this for a little while. I could keep that as a spare now. It's still in pretty good condition, getting a little bit grotty in places, but hey, I've bought a new one. You don't want to be replacing these every 10 thousand, you know what I mean? They're $72 now to buy by themselves, the air filter for the BT50. So, but I'm going to put a new one in. I might keep that as a spare, blow it out, keep it as a spare, so if I go and do some dusty roads or whatever, or go to Cape York, I can keep that as a spare just in case something happens to this one. So in the meantime, I'm going to lift that up. There's a few little bits of grass. Blow that out in there. Then, new air filter. As I said, I bought the filter kit. It was a lot cheaper, hell of a lot cheaper. Brand new air filter. She goes in like that, and it only goes in one way. You can see there's a little notch in here. You line that, that notch up there, in she goes. 
in we go. And hopefully that will clip back on near one. Come on. Two. And that shouldn't take that. Three. There we go there. Air filter is in. Next thing is the mass airflow meter. I've never done this before, but it's a pretty easy job. And all I need for this is there's a couple of screws there, which you'll see is these are not a normal Allen key. These are a T, they all start with T. Big ones, T50, 45, T40. And I've, I've, the, the one that fits the BT50 is the second smallest, which I think, so it's rubbed off. I think it's a T15. But anyway, it was the smaller size and it's got the little, it's not like a normal Allen key with a hexagon. It's a, the T piece, they call it. Anyway, there it is. So all I do there, a little red clip here, pull that out. I haven't got any, there we go. Pull that out, take the cable off. Slide the cable off there. What I might do while I've got this is give that a blowout. I don't know if that does anything, but it makes me feel like I'm a tradie using the air gun. Even dumb, dumb asses like me. Tell you, it's good having a compressor in your shed too, guys. Just a little cheap one from Super Cheap. You can check your tires. You can use the blower, which comes in handy for about 100 bucks or whatever, it's really worth having one in there. Okay, so, where'd my Allen key go? And all we do for the mass airflow meter now is two, two screws to bring out, one, and the second one's down here, and I'll loosen that off, take the two screws out, and I'm gonna pull this out, and I'll see you over at the counter, and we'll give it a clean up. Okay, so that's the mass, mass airflow meter there. Basically, if that plays up, guys, your whole bloody car starts playing up, measures your, the airflow and all that, and the computer then works out how much diesel it needs and all that. I don't understand much about them, but I do know if they start playing up, your car has terrible problems. So they say give about 10 to 15 squirts, and we're gonna do it both sides. Mass airflow cleaner, CRC. It's like an electrical contact. Evaporates in seconds, so let's give her a hit. Might go this way, a little bit of dirt come out there. There we go. Give him a clean, don't get our fingers on it. And I can see that evaporating now, we'll let that Give it a minute or so, I can see it evaporating off there. Let it fully evaporate before we put it back in. Righty-o, so it's totally dry now. It only goes in one way. Okay, goes in like that. And then when I find my little green thing, which I took over to the bench, we put two screws in, and then we put our plug back in there, okay? So I'll do that. And so you've seen how you can take the mass airflow meter out and give it a squirt. Two screws, plug that back in, clip the red thing forward and we're good to go. So air filter, mass airflow uh, meter has been done. This is the one everyone forgets about, the cabin filter. I bet there's people out there now going, holy shit, when did I last change that, if ever. Cabin filter, guys, don't forget about them. Now, on the BT50, I've just got to pull the glove box down and get access to it, and all me shit in the glove box falls out every time I do it. And under here, I've got to remember how to do this. So I, I remembered how to do it. I had to get me a little kick-ass torch. There's a little... That comes out, so... If you're wondering, that's the right hand side, you pinch those together like that and it comes off. So that, that comes out there. Now this is where you remember how the filter comes out. Just pull straight out guys and there you go, slide straight out and on the back that's got this side up, that is putrid. I forget when I last changed that, that is putrid. Now. Another good thing is probably blow that out every time 
once a week, once a fortnight with your air compressor. But that's pretty, pretty grubby, real grubby actually. So that's going, new one's going in. Old Barry Beef opening. And that'll slide in, look, oh yeah, look at the difference there. Once again, makes me feel special. Makes me feel like I'm doing something. Pretty. A lot of fluff and dirt. Dead cockroach. <laughs> what else am I gonna find? Probably a dead rat. Have a quick chat about tire rotation now. Depends whether you're doing a four or a five tire rotation. I'm gonna put the uh, diagram of how to do it at the end of this clip, guys. So if you, whether you're doing it, I've only got four mud tires, so I'm gonna do a four tire rotation. Basically, in a nutshell, I bring the rear left, so the passenger rear to the front, the driver's rear to the front, and then this front one will go across, crisscross, across to the rear right, passenger right, and the front tire, the front driver's side, will come back to the passenger rear. So back tires come forward and then you uh, criss your front tires across, and you'll see the diagram at the back. Got the trolley jack there and my little whiz around stool that I all bought from Super Cheap years ago. Geez, it comes in handy. You might think, oh, it's a waste of money, but down the track, if you're gonna do your own maintenance, it's really good to have some stuff in your shed, if you've got a shed, that is. Now, I'm lucky here, I can do my own tire rotation. It's gonna be a lot of work. I'm not gonna take you right through it. Basically, I'm gonna bring the rear, the rear tires up to the front, and then I'm gonna swap this one over there, and that one will come across this way and crisscross the front ones. That's how you do a four tire rotation. Now, before I jack it up with the trolley jack, okay? First gear, handbrake on nice and tight so it's not gonna roll off the jack, okay? Or you can also chock your wheels, which I've got some chocks in the uh, camper trailer, just thought about that. I'm gonna chock, chock one of my rear wheels as well. Extra safety, can never be too safe when you're doing this stuff, okay? So, before you jack your vehicle up, guys, is we crack the wheel nuts to the left and this one here I've got a um, what size 19 mil so 19 mil socket on there just loosen them off there we go one. just loosen them get them on there come on loosen just so I can get them off once it's jacked up now I want to get on there all right so then I can take that off then. Gonna go and grab my chocks, and then we'll have it so that you can then do it by hand. I'll grab the chocks and then we'll jack her up. Right, so quick rehash. First gear, handbrake on, chock your wheels if you can. Loosen your wheel nut, crack your wheel nuts. Jack it up off the ground, which I just did with the trolley jack. Now we can take our wheel nuts off. I guess if you've got things you can put under there, do it. I replaced my wheel nuts too. BT50 ones and Ranger ones were renowned for rounding off. They had an outer casing on them. These are, these are a solid piece, so I can't round them off. Once you round them off, you're in deep shit. So I've replaced all these wheel nuts. Went into Burst and Zordo and replaced a lot of them because the ones that come with them had an outer sheath and if you round it off, you're in deep shit, as I said. Keep repeating myself, don't I? Your brother says that. Paul, you repeat yourself all the time. I said, if you knew the people I'd been dealing with for the last 19 years, you'll know why. 
they weren't the smartest people. Let me tell you, right I. So that one comes off. So I'll just put him there for now, so I know where he come from. And I'll put this one on. So you can see it's going to be a bit of a J. I've got to take all four tyres off, put my four spare all terrains on, then move that one around. That one I just took off is going to go over on the rear driver's side. And the rear ones will come straight forward, and I'll do that. And that's the how I'm going to rotate my tyres. I'll come back when I'm done. This will probably take me an hour or so. But hey, it's all good fun. I'm out in the shed. Who cares? Another thing you can do while it's off, I like using this. I don't know if it does anything, but I'm gonna blow the front out. While your wheel's off, have a look under there. I've just got brand new suspension on Ironman suspension about three months ago with that. It's all going well. Check your brake pads. They look like they got plenty of meat on them. This is when you can inspect I would never do my own brakes. I'm not uh, experienced enough for that, but if I saw that there was a problem with my brakes, I'd book it into the mechanic and get them sorted out straight away. One of the most important things on your vehicle. All looking good. I'll throw the other all-terrain on, change them all around, and then I'll swap the muddies, and then put the mud tires back on in their, in their thing. As I said, that one I just took off is going over to the driver's rear. That'll keep me occupied for, I reckon, at least 45 minutes doing it manually. Yeah, it'd be nice to have a rattle gun and a ramp and that all, wouldn't it, um, at the workshop. But hey, this doesn't cost me anything except a bit of time. I want to have a quick chat about when you put your wheel nuts on, guys. So this is the all-terrain going on. All good mechanics at tyre shops should never put these straight on a rattle gun and and go for it. I've had a tire shop do that and they cross-threaded my studs and had to get them redone. Piss me off. Do them by hand to start with. Just do them up by hand so you don't cross-thread them. On there. On there. Now, listen, I'm going to do them up. Actually, I will. Where's my trusty cross brace? I like this one here. Works well. Which is the one I need? I think it's this one. I'm not going to do these up, I'm not going to talk them up yet, I'll show you that right at the end. When you do it, always do your wheel nuts in the cross. Don't ever go one, two, three, four. You go that top, bottom. Nip it up, then this one, and then the one across from it. And then that one, and there. So. Just nip them up a little bit. Now we can lower it. Nice and slow. And then, what you do then, if this was, I'm not gonna talk these right up guys because um, I've got to reply, I've got to put the thing on. So, but what you would do now, so I've done them, released it down, now we torque them up. Okay, and you do that one until it torques, and then I would do that one. Then this one, and then that one. And then that one, and then that one. I've done them up tight enough. That's got to come back off, as you know, because the rear passenger side is going to come forward and come onto this, so I'm not going to talk them up now. I talk up the mud tyres once I get them back on. Hope you've learned a bit from there, a few safety things. 
okay? And how to do. Crack your wheel nuts, jack it up, take it off, put it on, do them up by hand, nip them up a little bit, lower the jack, and then tension them up then, and torque them up. It's at 103, I'll see how that goes. I was, but I've been talking them to 140, but anyway, that's it. I'm not, come, camera won't be coming back on again until I've bloody just about finished putting the mud tires back on. Right. Righto, so that took oh, half an hour, guys. Bit of stuffing around. But hey, so, took the mud tires off and left them where they were so I know I don't get them mixed up. So what I do now is, This one comes straight forward on the same side. He comes forward to the front. Get him set up so he doesn't fall over. Stay. Now, this front left, I take him over, cross him over to the rear on the other side. How's this for high tech bloody technology, I tell you. So driver's side, driver's side rear comes straight ahead like the other one, it just comes down to the front. And the driver's front, he crisscrosses across the other side. Right, eh? So now I've rotated the mud tyres to where I want them, so I know this one goes on here now. I ought to go back it all through it again and do exactly what I did just before. So, loosen them off. And I haven't nipped them all the way up this time, so it's gonna be a bit easier. That one there. That one. That one. That one. Right, loosen them off, jack him up, and then swap them over. Little trick I learned off Brad Howell watching when Brad did the service on the BT50. It's got some on there, but a little bit of, little bit of grease on the wheel studs. Doesn't go astray, does it? Right, eh? Wipe this up and then put the muddy on, whip up, and then I'll, I'll rehash it on how to tighten the wheel nuts, eh? Rightio. Time to nip them up. I've just done them up a little bit, jacked down, and now it's time to thing. One there. Oh, that's already done. Down that one, across to this one, across to that one, this one, and this one. So, I don't know. Manual says 103, um, not foot pounds, Newton meters, 103. I've been doing them the 140. That doesn't feel tight enough for me. So I was gonna say, always refer to your manual. 103 doesn't feel tight enough to me. I'm going back to 140. I just did it on 103, which is what the manual said. It just, I don't know. <laughs> I wasn't confident with 103. Caravan was always 140 newton meters, and I've always kept the same on the BT. I'm gonna stick with 140, guys. You don't wanna over tighten them, don't wanna under tighten them too, so I'm gonna to go to 140. That's better. Down to the opposite one. This one. Yeah, they were too, I reckon they're too loose. 103. Opposite one. There we go. Now yeah, this one. That one and then the opposite one again. That's 140, just another little quick check. Now I can just go around, I'm just checking them. You can go around. Right, eh? 140 Newton meters talked up and I'll do another 500k or whatever and I'll double check them. Always once you've had your wheels off and you've done your wheel nuts, 
don't forget to check them uh, down the track just in case always do a double check good habit to get into is to check your wheel nuts once a week if you can I, I don't in the army we had to check the bloody things every time we stopped but anyway same again so this tire came off the passenger rear and came straight forward I've rotated them I'm gonna go around now and put all the mud tires back on and then we'll come back and we'll check the tire pressures not only of the ones on here we're going to check our spare as well oh mud tires rotated all torqued up and as I said before I drive anywhere I'll do another quick check on my wheel nuts double check everything and after about 500 K or even a couple hundred couple of trips I'll check them again okay because I've had the wheels off next thing we do check our tire pressures my magic numbers guys 38 28 18 38 for the highway 28 corrugated roads 18 four-wheel driving sandy tracks stuff like that beach work you can get can go lower if you want Rafa's probably pissed on that anyway down a little bit This one was down a bit, yeah. There you go. 38. I haven't checked my tyres for a while, I must admit. I always teach the kids on their driving course. When you get your car, check your tyres every time you fuel up. I never do. <laughs> Practice what you preach, Buck. 38 all round. And my spare. I'm going to wind the spare down. And I'm going to make sure I'll probably put 40 or 42 in that. Because that's one you do not check very often. So don't forget to check your spare tire underneath. It's a pain in the bum to wind down, I know, but hey, check it, because the time you need it, you don't want it to be flat. There you go, tire's done, guys. Oh. So this is my fourth all-terrain, guys, because I've got a larger tire. I run my fourth all-terrain as the spare, so it's the same size as the muddies, or vice versa. These are gets dirty under there. I'm going to actually leave this out so I can get under and um, in the next couple of days and give the underneath where the spare wheel goes. There's mud and shit up there, so I'm going to give it a really good clean up. Give this a bit of a scrub up. Pretty good job this thing. 